give God praise. So let us go into God's word, yes? In the book of Revelation, uh, chapter 3, and we are reading verse 7 to verse 8. Revelation, uh, chapter 3, and we are reading verses 7 and verse 8. Hallelujah. Okay. Oh, it's behind me. All right. I thought it was in front. <laughs> All right. Amen. Let's read together. <laughs> to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, right. These things said he that is holy. He that is true, he that has the key of David. I want you to underline that in your mind. The key of David. Because remember, we are talking about open doors, yes? Amen. So I want you to underline that in your mind. As to who possessed the key of David. That he had the key of David. He that openeth and no man shut it. And shut it and no man open it. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So we want to talk a little bit about the key of David. Yeah? The key of David. Somebody say the key of David. Okay, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Somebody has to keep each other control. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, so, this is your 50th anniversary. Yeah? 50th. And in God's calendar, or how God checked years. 50 years is the year of Jubilee. But it is also a year of reset. Just like when you want to reset something, every 50th year, if you were a slave, you were free. If you sold your land, it was restored. Everything that you gave up over the 50 years was restored to you. And you began a brand new life. Yes? So they call it a reset. And in God's calendar, how God looks at time, and God looks down at this house, God is seeing a reset. Amen? Are you following me? And so, you have been functioning from the year 1973, yes, to 2023. And it is important, and I'm glad that Minister Lindsay gave us some of the um, history of the church. I was a little annoyed with Bishop Chandler because he gave me the history of the church and then he gave it to someone else. <laughs> so I thought I was coming, I give to Johan. I said, Johan, when I come up to share the word, I want you to put up the history. But apparently my bishop <laughs> gave it to someone else and he did a little more work with it, amen? Yeah, he did a little more work with it. But um, so that kind of take away some of my shine, amen? <laughs> I am really, really going to say some kind of stuff about that, but all right. <laughs> but it is important to understand your history. And I'm talking to Lighthouse, Tabernacle of Grace. It is important to understand your history. Because if you don't understand your history, you wouldn't know what you are fighting against. It is my belief, and this is just 
speculate with them. I have no real scripture to back it up. There's a scripture in the book of Isaiah that talks about the covering cast over nations, like a veil cast over nations. But this is just speculative. And every time I think that every time a church is built in, that Satan assign demon spirits to that church. And they have one purpose, and that is to hinder the growth and expansion of that church. Amen? And if you don't know what happened for the last 50 years, then you are unable to fully engage demonic forces and to have even a greater victory than we now have, amen? Yeah. History is important. And I want each and every person to understand that, that the history is important. The man with the keys said, Hear what the man with the keys said. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. That is the man with the keys said that. He says, I will give you the, key, the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whenever Jesus gives, gives a kingdom key, he gives a key that unlocks something in the spiritual realm. He unlocks a dimension in the spiritual realm that only he can open us to. He can open it and no man can shut it. So that it is important to understand how God opened this church and how he started it and the pastors that went before because Pastor Anthony is standing on those past pastors and leaders and members, amen? amen? That's what he's standing on. He has been here 40 years. And he has now been, become the pastor of the church. Or the angel of the church. We'll talk a little bit about that. And so, Pastor Anthony, to you and your leadership team, it is important that you continue to teach about those who have gone before so that we can appreciate what we have. Because people don't appreciate, people come and they look at what you have here, but they don't know how it came to be. And sometimes it is just like a child. You give that child, you leave a lot of money for that child, and because that child doesn't value it, the child wastes the money. And so you have to constantly, and I'm glad that there are people alive today, a sister Pigot, and, and who understand the history of, of this church. And also Bishop Chandler, he played young boy, but he right there. He's one of them who was alive coming up here. So that so that we have to understand this. And I'm, I'm serious about it. Every church. Every church, you should know your history. Because there are demonic spirits assigned to churches. From the day that church is built in 1973, when this church was built, in, I believe that Satan assigned demons to make sure that you don't expand and you don't grow and you don't become what God desired for you to be. So if I understand my history, and I understand what I have to fight against, then I'm in a better position Amen. to deal with it. Amen? Amen? It's just like in your family. You have to understand the history of your family. Amen. Because if you don't understand the history of your family, because there are some people in your family that doesn't go to school, that refuse to go to school. Yes. Are you following me? Yes. There's a spirit yes. that says to some members of our family, that you don't go to school. 
and, and there's a spirit of dropout Go ahead. Go ahead. that follows families. And you sit down there and you just say, hey, little boy, does No. You have to understand the history of your family. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. One of the things about my family is that none of us went to university. But I have children who attended university. Because I understand this thing, you know. I understand that if I don't break certain cycles, I will continue to be defeated by the enemy. Amen. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So it is important that you understand the history of your congregation. I have made sure that I understand clearly the history of the Point Forte Church. I, I have that dumb back. I know exactly what spirit I am fighting against. I am clear about that. And so we continue to work and we continue to bind and we continue to break the enemy's power even now. Yes. This man here, David, David. He was like one, I don't know, he's all over the place. He's in Lavendale and he's in Point Fortin. Yeah. At the same time. <laughs> and he, I basically, I, you could say, well, I took over for him. But there were some other pastors in between. And so he started the work with his brother and him and his daddy and, and, and that kind of stuff. And they started the work in Point Fortin. And when we came to Christian Union Church, he invited us with open arms. And then there were some difficulties, yes? Plenty, yeah. Every year, every year, every year. We seem to be going forward and then backwards. We seem to get a breakthrough, backwards. People start coming to church, and then all of a sudden, people are coming to church. And we begin to understand that we have to break certain spirits. Because if we don't understand our history, we will go along and say, then we pray like God, then we pray one God. We as leaders have to understand our history and we have to break those spirits in Jesus' name. Otherwise, our churches will continue to struggle. Our families will continue to struggle. Because we fail to sit down and think about the history of our family and the history of our churches. One of the things that we're going to do in this year that every minister in Christian Union Church is going to know about the history of the church. You're going to know from when it started and who started it. We have ministers who know nothing about our history. But we are changing that because we understand the dynamics that goes with that. If you understand where we came from and you understand the original vision, then you are able to move forward, yes? So after 50 years, you understand your history and now God has spoken to you concerning a very important matter. You have to understand that in every church, there are strongholds. Yes. In point forty, there are strongholds. Strongholds are mindsets that will not change. Mindsets that holds down the church. And I'm not talking about individuals here. I'm talking about spirit beings. And they are called strongholds. No wonder Jesus gave us the power to break and pull down these strongholds. And so we, 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 we have to spend some time at the altar. We have to spend some time in prayer. And we have to seek the face of God because there are strongholds that refuse to be broken. 
And these spirits will continue to operate if the children of God doesn't rise up and do what God has called us to do. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Let's 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 unpack Revelation. Revelation chapter 3, verse 7 and 8. Let's just kind of unpack that a little bit. This is Jesus speaking, amen? amen. It is the revelation of Jesus. Yeah. It is Jesus speaking to the church in Philadelphia. He says to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, Reverend Anthony Samuel, he says that he speaks to the angel of the church, which is the pastor or, or the leader of the church. Because angel, when it's an unfortunate uh, rendering, but it really means messenger. Angels are messengers also. So that you as the pastor of the church, God speaks to you. And when he speaks to you, he gives you the grace and the people to carry out what you are saying. The Bible says that Jesus spake to the angel of the church. Somebody said the church. Yes. It is the word ecclesia. And it means all of them. Amen. But we have messed up that word in it. That word does not mean to call out from the word. In it. Wow. The word means to call out from your house and come to a public place where you worship God. That's the ecclesia. Wow, everybody wants to know like people are. <laughs> Go back and read. Go back and read in Revelation what is the original Greek word. And it speaks about coming out from your homes and coming to a place of public worship. So you are called the called out ones. Because God called you out of your home to come into the house to worship them. Amen? Amen. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. You can go back and check it. Amen? Amen. In fact, you could Google it now if you want. But that's the reality of it. And here's the thing. There is a concert, there, there, there is a concert, concerted effort by demonic spirits to circumvent that. Yes. Go ahead. Because you see, we have mixed up the word. Mm -hmm. And we think that the word refers to called out of the world. Mm -hmm. But that is not the original idea of the word. The original idea of the word is to come out of your house and come to a place of worship. Somebody say Jesus. Yes. So here is what is happening now. <laughs> Satan is doing some things to prevent that from happening. So you have what you call now the micro church. The microchurch is not a bad thing because we call it cell groups. Yeah? But the microchurch of this time speaks of a group of people that comes together and have church. You hear me? They have no leadership because they say they are called priests. Everybody is priest, so everybody preaches to everybody. There is no leadership in the church. So they say from five to forty persons, you have a microchurch, you don't have to go anywhere. 
or they can have their own little church and continue to function. It sounds good, eh? But that lends itself to all kinds of wrong doctrines. Go ahead. Because somebody will get up in that group and decide, God said to leave my wife. <laughs> Tell you the truth. It's crazy out here. And that is what God is saying to me. Who it is that will bring discipline to such a place? When everybody is leaders. So the micro church is coming. No, 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 it's not coming, it is here. You not only have the micro church, but they have taken the micro church to a new level. And it is called the metaverse. It is the third installment of the internet. Yep. But this is crazy. Because what they say, you can stay in your house and you can go to church. Wow. You hear me? Okay. The metaverse is such a place where you can actually touch somebody and feel them. You're not actually doing it. It's virtual. But they have made it to such a thing that you can actually, if you touch someone or you kiss someone, you can actually feel the sensation. So they say, you don't need to go to church. You just need to have a dollars or whatever you call it. You have the internet with 5G speed and you can enter into the metaverse. And you can go into someone's kitchen and you can have a meal. But they have to let you in, yes? So they're taking that and saying to the church, we don't need to congregate any longer. Let's stay out here in the virtual world and let's have a great time. So the enemy, and we see it, we see what happened in the pandemic. We, the church, we are now struggling to get people to come out to us. And that was just a pandemic, you know. That was just a disease or a virus that can mess with you. And they shut down the whole place. And the believers, and just it is the believers that are the hardest to get to come back out to church. All the city got in there? They're full. There is study nothing about no pandemic. Then come out and enjoy themselves. But the church, yes. we, we, you have to force them yes. to come out. Come on, somebody say Jesus. Yes. You know what we're talking about, you know? We have to actually pull them out of their homes now. All because they get a two years holiday. So you see how Satan is doing his stuff. Yes. And he's trying to get you and I to stay home. And say we can have church at home. Sure. It is the same thing that the people have been saying for years. I could stay home and I could look at television and I can have church. The days have come when the church must stand to be the church. Yes. And we must come out and worship God together. Amen. The Bible says that I am shot in the yeah. And how can I, how can that happen if we don't touch yeah. each other? Yeah. How would I know sometimes, I can look at you sometimes, and I don't know what you are going through. Yeah. But when we begin to talk, yeah. and we begin to have a discourse, we realize that you are going through what I am going through. Yeah. If you came out victorious, then I could come out victorious too. Yes, yes, I am yes, shot in yes, yes, yes. So Satan is trying that. Yes. The next thing he's trying is that once he gets at you, the next thing he does is to try to make you stay alone. Yes. See where he's taking us? 
so that if he gets you alone, he will begin to bombard you with all kinds of crazy yes. thoughts. Because you have nobody to talk to. You have nobody to bounce off anything on. So you begin to go crazy because of all the thoughts that you are having. And Satan then pulls you away and you stay by yourself. And me, you see them people. You know how we church people just drop it. You see, and when them when them ladies start to shake the head and move the neck. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. So we have to, what we have to do is to encourage each other to come out to church. Yes. Because the Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. So that's a challenge for all of us. But we're going to have the victory in Jesus' name. You see, all the gates of hell. So let's unpack Revelation. That's why I said we're going to unpack Revelation. And then I might talk something. All right. So to unlock Revelation chapter 7, um, chapter 3, verse 7 and 8, to unlock that, you must have the key of David. I want you to follow me. To unlock that, you must have the key of David. And if you understand the key of David, then you begin to understand what God has given to you. How God has an open door that he has opened and he has said to you, go through it. That is what he's saying to this house. Are you following me? He's saying to this house, I have opened a door that no man can shut. Only I can open that door. But there is something you have to do. When I open that door for you, you have to get up and go through the door. And when you reach in there, you must begin to understand what God is saying to the church. It sounds nice, eh? An open door. Go through. But that is packed with all kinds of things. That is, that is light hope revelation. Well, look, you put that at me. Well, you understand that? What God has given to you, you have to run with it. Because God has spoken to this church that I have opened the door. I want you to get up and go through the door. Amen. And I will open your minds to things hmm. yes. that is inside the door. Amen. Amen. Well, inside the place. Yes. Now, let me show you something. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is the key of David? What is the key of David? Now, I can't go through it everything. So, we're going to talk about if you, if you can, you can go to 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 6 to 8. I want you to understand something about this, about the key of David. Now, now David was in Hebron, or Hebron. And the Israelites came to him and made him king. When they made him king, his first act as king was to go to Jerusalem. It wasn't called Jerusalem then. It was called Jebu, or from the Jebusites, yeah? Amen. So he says the first act he did when he was crowned king is that he went to a place called Jerusalem. Because God had said to him that you see, Jerusalem will be your seat of government. Like the White House, yeah. we have what the Red House or something. <laughs> so he says, "Listen." So David, moving with that understanding and that revelation, his first act 
is to go to this place that God said to him will be your seat of government. But he encounters a problem when he reaches there. There is a stronghold and he has to break that stronghold before he gets into the city. Now, at that time, you had the you had Judah and the uh, the ancestors of Benjamin. They were living in that area, but apparently they couldn't break down the stronghold, so they decided they were going to live with it. Follow me. You are living with strongholds only because you say you cannot overcome it. So they merged with them and they began to live comfortable with this stronghold right in the middle of the place that God said will be my seat of government. Come on, are you with me? Yeah. Lift your hand and say hallelujah. hallelujah. Do not become comfortable with strong wounds in your life. Amen. If you have a problem with pornography or, or sex, don't get comfortable with it. Amen. Because if that stronghold take over, yes. you will never be able to have victory over anything because there is a stronghold there is a mindset there is something there that will not move unless God give you the key so David comes David is bad enough. David had some bad men with him hallelujah yeah that's why I asked you to come with me amen some bad men hallelujah <laughs> David, David had some real warriors with him. So when he came down to Jerusalem, he realized that there was this stronghold. So he says to them, he says, listen, in order for us to get that stronghold, somebody has to go inside. Because it is only from inside could you open the gate. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. It is only from the inside you could actually open that gate because it was made of iron. And it had some interlock inside that the only how you could open that gate is to get the key for it and unlock it and disengage the boards that were keeping it together. You have to go in. Here's what's happening. So David sees that. David had a guy called Joab. And he says to him, anybody that decides to go in there and get this door open, I will make them the general of my arms. Now, this, listen, the people who lived in that city said to David, you come in to us, we have the blind that is here, the blind and the the, the um, who was the next person they had? The blind and the the lame. Yeah. yeah. The blind and the lame. I hear what I said to David. We, if you come, you have to pass them first, and you can't pass them. Yeah. That is something. Yeah. That was strongholds us do it. So they said to David, the men of the city said, the leaders of the city said, listen. We don't care about you, little David. The lame and the blind, 
will destroy you. Hold it right there. Hold it right there. He says, so don't come. David said, okay. David got one man, one warrior. Yes. And let me tell you something. The stronghold was a place that had a shaft that he had to climb up and then go down. So, this warrior said, David, I go in. And he scales the wall, he scales the walls. Go up the shaft, then come down in a little part. You'll have to see that for yourself, amen? Mm -hmm. He had to find the key. He found the key. Uh, this sounds like it was not in the back, right? <laughs> yeah, I want you know the face, but right there. <laughs> yeah. He found the key. Because I can tell you he found the key because I know that David conquered the city. David break down the stronghold. Yeah. So I can tell you that. The only how you can have the victory is somebody to scale the wall, get inside, yeah. find the key, and open from inside. Yeah. And when you open from inside, what happens is that the army floods yeah. through the gate, yeah. breaking down everything. Yeah. So it wasn't an easy thing for for, for God to establish his government in Jerusalem. He had to be insulted by the devil. But he established it. And he says, Jesus now says in the book of Revelation, I have the key of David. Oh, come on. Come on, somebody lift your hand and say hallelujah. Come on, show hallelujah. Come on, lift your voice and give him the praise. Come on. Someone say, Hallelujah! You give him the praise. So here's the thing. You ready? Here's the thing. Jesus has the key, yes? You know what Jesus did for us? He went inside Amen. the belly Amen. of the kingdom of darkness. Yes. Because you couldn't do it from the outside. Yes. Are you following me? Yes. If you're going to open the prison door, you have to get the key and you have to open it from the inside. Yes. Jesus descended to that place. Are you for and Jesus saying you have the keys of death? Yeah. So he went and he opened that place. That is why nobody can tell us he's not alive. Because he set us free. <laughs> I am free because Jesus has the keys. That has opened my cell and set me free. Yes. So that when I worship him, yes. I don't business about you or somebody else. Yes. I know what Jesus did for me. Yes. I know where he took me yes. from. Yes. And I don't business about nobody. nobody. I come to Hallelujah. worship him. Yes. And I will worship him with all. do for me yes. what Jesus did for me.
that the church in Laventille must be able to go in and have the book. Come on, say hallelujah. So what key or what door has God opened for Lighthouse? What door? Here's your revelation. The key to that is in your name. Amen. Amen. That's the key. You see what God said to you, there's an open door. Get up and go in. That is locked in to the name that you have on your church. You know what you call yourselves? Lighthouse. Tabernacle of grace. You unpack that and you will see where God is leading you as he opens the door. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. Let me, let me just tell you this quick and we will come to a close. A lighthouse is a tall tower with a large bright light at the top. That's a lighthouse. The weather doesn't interfere with it because it is so high and the light is so bright that it sits on top so that everybody that is in the sea that is coming to shore can know whether it is safe to come or it is not safe to come. There are two lights in a tower. One is white or bright and the other is red. If you see the red, it is not safe to come. If you see the white, it is safe to come in. Hallelujah. Now, now, the people who established the, the lighthouse understand the geography of this area. They know that if there's a light in this place and God opened a door for you, there is no devil that can stop you from having a picture. Somebody say, yes, Lord. It didn't only have a white light and a red light, but it had a horn. That they used to song. Somebody say song. And that song could be heard for several miles. Telling the captain of the ship, danger! I thank God for the revelation yes. that God has given to this house. Yes. You are a lighthouse. That is the element that God has opened into the spiritual realm mm -hmm. for you to go in and have the picture. Yes. You say, that is what them say. Jesus says that. Mm -hmm. The place have this and the place have that and the place have the other. Let the light shine. shine. Yes. Yes. Every member of this house, over here again. Let the light shine. It don't matter what the enemy is doing. If my light shine, Jesus says, I will draw. Is responsible for monitoring the weather. Yeah. The keeper of the tower. He is responsible for maintaining the beacon. He is responsible for ensuring that it operates properly. Because if that is not operated properly, ships will come in and get damaged. Angel of the church, yes. pastor of the church, yes. this is your responsibility. Yes. And all pastors, that is our responsibility. Yes. Go ahead. Let me just run a little bit quick. Can you call yourself Tabernacle? Yes. Yeah. Lighthouse, 
tabernacle. You know that tabernacle is a dwelling place. Yes, sir. The tabernacle in the old days was considered the dwelling place of God. Yes. You know where God dwells now? We are now the tabernacle of God. Yes. Where God dwells. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And if God dwells in this tabernacle, the light must shine. Yes. Yes. goes to the Mount of Transfiguration and because of the glory that is in him it shines out yes. nothing can stop it from shining because if he's dwelling inside of me no matter how dark it gets my light will shine hallelujah so I say to the church, go through it all. Yes. Get up and get through it all. Yes. And let your light shine. Come yes. oh, on, lift your hand. Let's say hallelujah.
get up and run through it. Yeah. Lighthouse Tabernacle of Grace. 50 years. Guess what? God reset everything. God reset everything.
Change. Hallelujah. And the spirit of God will change. Yeah. 